Welcome to lecture 36 which is on classification of UAVs. In this lecture you will learn about the various types of the UAVs and drones and their uses as per their classification. So, we begin the lecture. We can classify the drone systems according to their wing type, according to the sensor type which they carry with them according to the weight, weight of the system as well as the payload and the range according to the range, how long they can go, how long they can fly. According to the automation we can do the classification, there are some which are manually controlled, there are some which are fully automized. And lastly, the classification is on the basis of their application. So, whether we are using it for a civilian application or military application or some agriculture based application. So, if you look at the broad categorization, you know different literature will give you the different way of classifying the drones. So, here four types of uh, categories have been used according to the size the drones have been classified. Then further they have according to the range how long close range or short range or the mid range the according to the height altitude whether they can go very high or they can fly at a lower altitude and according to the rotor systems which have. So, there is no standard classification method of the drone and in the literature you will find that the people have used different ways of classifying them. But certainly you know the, we can categorize them on the basis of their aerodynamics whether they are fixed wing or the multi rotor kind of things are there or we can actually classify on the basis of their landing systems on the basis of their weights. So, there are different ways. So, let us take one by one all of them. So, if we take according to the wing type then there are two broad categories here. The first one is the fixed wing and the second is the rotary wing. In the fixed wing you can see this is this looks like an aircraft the smaller version of the aircraft without a pilot. But in the rotary wing type you will see the rotors the motors are there and there are rotary wings are there uh, and they are actually moving at a very very high speed those wings. So, uh, there is uh, on the basis of the wing type there is a fixed wing, there is a multi uh, rotors wing are there and then there is a hybrid system is there the combination of the two. So, each one has its specific application as under the multi rotor system we can see that there are several rotors which are attached to it 4, 6, 8 things like that. So, under the 3 categories here which is fixed wing, the multi rotor and the hybrid type, the fixed wing will have very long range endurance while the rotary wing they are easy to take off from the ground vertically up. And hybrid system which is takes the advantage of both the capabilities of the both. Now, we look at uh, this particular table here uh, when the drones have been classified according to their wings and if we compare their specifications. So, maneuverability, price, easy to use, operation range, the stability, payload capacity and efficiency for mapping. These have been compared so that we know that for what kind of application which particular drone is useful. So, you can see there are tick marks for multi rotor drones, there are tick marks for the fixed wing drones. So, there are certain applications for which we find that the multi rotor is useful for other applications the fixed wing is very very useful. So, if we uh, compare the price also the multi rotor they are much cheaper in price as compared to the fixed wings. Multi rotors are very easy to use 
as far as the payload capacity is concerned you know they can uh, have uh, payload capacity up to 5 kg uh, as far as the efficiency of mapping is concerned the multi rotor has a uh, lot of uh, good things for mapping the area so uh, you can see that uh, uh, if we compare that uh, multi rotor drone has lots of lots of advantage when we are talking of the data collection when we are talking of the mapping work for civilian purpose it is basically uh, it depends upon our application part for which application we would like to go for uh, which kind of a drone so if uh, we want high endurance uh, drone uav system uh, there are fixed wing uavs which can fly uh, for a longer time so more than 90 minutes of flight time one can get from these whereas the multi rotor drums can give 15 to 20 minutes of flight time only and weight is about 4 to 5 kg weight total and the very high uh, quality camera megapixel 24 megapixel camera or higher megapixel cameras are there and the other advantage is for this is a 12 km communication range so you can communicate for a longer distance with the help of the fixed wing uav when we are talking of the rotary wings there are wings which will move so we have under this category a quadcopter or multicopter which is the most popular unit because this is used very widely in different applications so quadcopter or multicopter had the four wings there as you can see from the first figure then the second is the hexacopter where we have the six rotary wings and octa eight so there are different combinations of these wings are there and each one has its own benefits so if we go for octacopter it has much more stability when it is in the air uh, and when the aerodynamics forces are working on it as compared to the quadcopter cost wise also there is a difference in the cost of these so let's see uh, once again the comparison of multi rotor and the fixed wing kind of a uh, flying height is uh, for quadcopter is up to 500 meter flying time roughly 20 to 30 minutes so that means if you are working for more time then you need uh, rep to replace the battery then coverage of the area is 0.4 to 0.8 km square per flight and the maximum range is 5 km through which you can communicate with this multi rotor so area covered is small as compared to the fixed wing fixed wing will move at a high, very high speed the flying height could could be up to 1000 m 1 km flying time is much more um, roughly 2 and a half times or more uh, as compared to the multi rotor the coverage of the area definitely when the um the flying time is more speed is more height is more the area covered is 10 to 40 km square per fly and range is 30 to 60 km because they are available in different specifications now if we talk about the cost factor the multi rotor uh, are cheap they are easy to operate and that is why they are much much popular in very very large number of studies where it relates to just the data collection uh, part or the mapping part they are vertical and easy landing so you can actually from your rooftop you can uh, fly it because it does not require a runway it does not require a big ground actually to take off for landing purpose short flights are there so you can uh, cover a small area reasonably well within 15 to 20 minutes of flying time uh, suitable for a local mapping small area and it is complying with the aviation regulations as well on the other hand the wing wing types they are expensive so you end up paying more money when you are buying you need some experienced operator in order to fly that because it is continuously moving at a bit higher speed uh, 
in addition the what you require is the horizontal landing and sufficient space for a runway so a small runway would be required so that could be used for landing and takeoff purpose then uh, very long flights uh, it can maintain it can cover large area and uh, it requires a permission to fly and also it is suitable for large area mapping so you can cover a large area now if we consider the drones on the basis of their weight so they are available in different weights weight of the uh, drone itself plus uh, the kind of the weight they can carry the payload they can carry with them so they are classified according to the weight weight of the drone system only without payload so there are small uavs which are uh, less than 25 kg of weight then there are micro uavs which are less than 2 kg of the weights so uh, there are model uh, uavs which are used for the purpose of recreational purpose there are some racing drones are also classified according to their size so you have very very small size uh, uh, toy drones are also available nowadays so if you look at this uh, particular figure the uh, in india the classification has been made uh, by the uh, civil aviation department of civil aviation and uh, you can see a nano kind of a drone is there less than 250 grams drone that is called nano uh, if the weight is between 250 and 2 kg this is called the micro then the next category is the small drone where weight uh, becomes between 2 kg to 25 kg and medium is uh, 25 to 150 kg and large one will have more than 150 kg so this is the categorization in india it has been done as per the size of the drone so each one has its own specific applications and most of the time we are using the micro drones where the weight is not very heavy uh if we see uh, what is the range of these drones and uh, uh, what is the maximum weight of this which is important so this particular table gives us the classification uh, and classification has been done from nano micro mini light small tactical and uh, male and hail so and uh, then medium altitude and uh, high altitude heavy and super heavy so these are according to the weight of the drone and according to the range so we will like to select the drone according to the range of our application they could be available there are some drones which are available only in the fixed wing when we are talking of very long range and when we are talking of the heavy drone they are available in the fixed wing so right from starting from the small to now uh, you can see tactical male hail heavy and super heavy they are all fixed wing kind of a drone it's very heavy but if we are talking of the drones which are lighter in weights less than 50 kg weights then they are available in both the mode there are fixed wing and there are multi rotor kind of a wings are there so we can get a very very long range starting from 5 uh, km to 1500 km so this is the kind of classification according to the range has been done if you look at the pictures of the large uavs we have predator we have the harfang global hawk we are using these for a different purpose for the army and defense purpose and these are the example of medium kind of a uavs which are available to us so there are some examples of pioneer hunter drone fire scout eagle eye uh, and sky eye and watch keeper also we are also not using for the small mapping purpose you know these kind of medium also then there are small very small uavs and the name is like mosquito skate cyber quad mini so these are the very very small uavs available to us now as per range also the classification has been done uh, close range uavs so very close range uavs are there then there are uavs which we call as the short range 
then mid range then the endurance so again according to the distance according to the distance according to the range they can op be operated from the ground they have been classified so if we look at now classification according to the sensor systems according to the payload because this is a very very important component in all the drones uh, these payloads will collect the data for us in uh, different ways so uh, we have two broad classification here if we say uh, according to the sensor type the classification we have active remote sensing system and the passive remote sensing system so in active and passive remote sensing system which we have learned in our previous lecture there are various uh, sensor systems where there are passive sensor uh, have a different kind of a set of sensor system because uh, in passive they, it will depend upon the sunlight only when they are active sensor systems they have their own source of light to illuminate the object so we have different categories it could be a laser it could be a lidar system radar systems right and a sounder systems under the passive category of the systems we could have hyperspectral radiometer we have the radiometer data sounder data spectrometer so these are the two broad classification uh, now depending upon the application we will like to go for either the uavs which are employing active sensors or the passive sensor or the combination of the both we want to use during the day time as well as during the night time as well now uh, if we broadly see uh, you know the kind of data product which we are getting we are getting the data in the form of the images we are getting the data in the form of the point cloud data so these sensors are giving me two kind of a data it's a photographic data or it's a point cloud data so we uh, call it photogrammetric drone and lidar drone so popularly photogrammetric drone means that we'll get the images from that and lidar drone means that we'll get the point cloud data in the form of the x y z coordinates so if we are talking of the uh, photogrammetric drone then they are carrying the different sensors and the camera systems uh, employed in it so it could be rgb red green blue it could be a multi spectral camera thermal camera uh, so that we can get the thermal images and the hyper spectral cameras you can get the images in several wavelength of the spectrum so lidar and drone based system you know we have the laser based devices and you will get the coordinates according to that so depending upon our requirement so this is uh, the photograph which shows that how the photo based uav photo uav is working uh, collect the images you can see several images are there so it collect the several images of area and each image is a very detailed image uh, is uh, geo referenced also because there is a gps fitted while taking these images so the your first task would be to uh, merge these images to create a mosaic of these images and create a geo referenced uh, kind of a map from that so geo reference these images and then mosaicing of the images become the next part of it when you have lots of lots of photographs of the area so when you are working in a, a slightly medium kind of area you will have several thousand images because the drone is fly flying at a very very low altitude so you have very large number of images to handle with that now there are um, several multi spectral cameras are available different uh, companies are there which are manufacturing the different model different makes with different specifications which can work in these several spectral bands so second column here it shows that how the uh, multi spectral camera is working in mostly in a uh, visible part of the spectrum and available at different resolution the weight is another important factor because the payload should not be very heavy drone has to carry up in up into the sky and then there are uh, resolutions of the different cameras so uh, depending upon the resolution required the type of features which we want to identify we can employ because the resolution 
is also related to the cost of the camera. So, several multispectral cameras are available which can be mounted on the system. If we are talking of uh, a thermal cameras or the hyperspectral camera where we can get the images taken in the thermal infrared part of the region or hyperspectral camera means that same wavelength region uh, uh, the uh, visible part of the spectrum is sliced into several smaller regions. So, one can see the spectral range of these different cameras 7.5 to 13.5 uh, micrometer region is there and then uh, there is a 400 to 1000 nanometer region. So, these are the different spectral range and the resolution which we are getting is uh, quite good resolution images we are getting from that. Uh, as far as the weight is concerned, it is ranging from several grams, 400 grams approximately uh, to uh, maybe more than a kg. So, in different uh, specifications these are available, one has to carefully select the UAVs so that it can support these camera systems which we are uh, mounting for taking the images. Now, when we have uh, photo UAVs, uh, you have large number of photos. So, this uh, diagram is showing that how uh, we are actually using those large number of images in order to derive the final results. So, these are there are actually um, three major steps which are shown in the center which is the mission planning. So, you have to do some kind of a flight planning when you are flying to a particular area and this you are going to learn in a next lecture also and you are acquiring the image. Next is the image acquisition and the third part is that once you have acquired the images the triangulation part you know uh, you are uh, creating either a 3D model from that area so that DTM or DSM is generated or you are creating the ortho photograph. So, these are the products you can extract the feature prepare the map create the ortho image or carry out the 3D modeling of the area. So, these are some of the steps which we are following broad steps with the photogrammetric based UAV. Now, we have the uh, LIDAR based uh, system and in the LIDAR based system as you can see in this uh, diagram also that how the LIDAR system is scanning the whole of the ground surface. So, it is sending the uh, lots of lots of laser beams and uh, acquiring the data. So, in this example is 700 meter is the width of the uh, beam which is sent to the ground from a certain height and the entire data would be collected in one go with the help of the uh, laser based equipment. So, we have a laser lidar scanner, we have the GNSS unit also fitted to that. So, with the help of that GNSS we get the coordinates of the point. So, we have um, three dimensional real coordinates of the ground points with the help of the LIDAR. But there are very very large number of ground points. So, you have millions and millions of uh, the points whose coordinates are now known to you. So, it is really a very challenging task now to analyze the data to carry out uh, the Mm, mapping work or the analysis work. So, you can see the comparison of the two. So, on the left side uh, I have shown you that how the photogrammetric data would look like which is collected from the photographic sensors and the second one is the LIDAR data. So, this LIDAR data uh, uh, will give you some kind of a, a 3D model of the area because they have 3D coordinates associated with it. So, if we are uh, if we compare the two together that which is better now um, if we have areas of uh, similar nature. So, you have to uh, you know revisit the field when you are uh, actually taking the data collecting the data of the same area again and again uh, by the traditional method. Then is a suitability inaccessible terrain. So, this is very very important that uh, the UAV based technology is very much suitable when the terrain is inaccessible, suitable for a uh, small area, suitability for large area both and uh, there is actually no 
ambiguity but there are uh, areas of ambiguity as far as the accuracy and speed is concerned that which one is better whether we should go for the photogrammetric uav or whether we go for the lidar image. so when we are talking of the lidar images there is very much suitable for the woody terrains when we are working in the forest area because lot of laser beams will strike to the ground and uh, it will find some openings in the ground and and strike to the ground and give you the data not only of the ground cover but of the ground also the data is quite reliable you can work day and night operation it is cost effectiveness of the data so these are some of the advantages when we are talking of the uav based system and the lidar based system uh, this is a uh, a comparison of traditional method and the uav based method when we are talking of certain parameters so parameters are like accuracy speed completeness reliability of the data its cost effectiveness its suitability for the inaccessible terrain automation human dependence need to revisit the field and exposure to surveyor suitability and day and night operation so this is all actually shown in the form of the a comparison here and you can see the uh, photogrammetric and the lidar based methods are uh, basically uh, qualifying in many of the things here that their accuracy level and speed level is quite satisfactory as compared to when we are talking of the satellite image or the aerial photographs because there are certain areas where the uh, satellite image cannot provide you that much of accuracy as you can get from the photogrammetric lidar photogrammetric uav and the lidar uav now uav is complementing the the uh, remote sensing data so we are actually uh, getting some information from the high resolution satellite images but there are areas where we uh, cannot get Uh, the complete information from the remote sensing images so what is done is we use the combination of the two together so sometimes in remote sensing images you get the cloud cover is a big problem so that cloud cover problem is uh, not there when uh, we are taking the uav data because it is taken at the lower altitude we are getting very very detailed information so uh, Uh, from this these images and uh, without any atmospheric interference so advantages of these images along with the remote sensing images are you know you have the flexibility to procure these anywhere and any time so you can update the image which you get from remote sensing data after every 14 or 16 days and if you want to update the details in between you can do that you can get a very very high resolution data which is 15 cm per pixel or 2 1 cm per pixel so that is the kind of the resolution which you are getting from the uav which is just impossible and not possible from any of the remote sensing data products and the lower cost in comparison to the plain based aerial photography when we have the aerial photograph the cost will be much higher as compared to the data which we are collecting from the uav so in a way this data can help us a lot if we analyze along with the remote sensing data now it is complementing our gis platform also which you will learn later on what gis is how it works so this is, uh, is providing uh, us the data either in the form of a a 3d model or elevation model or the xyz coordinates so all these data can be directly used in the gis environment and uh, merged or clubbed or fused with the other data products to carry out the mapping so uh, in fact uh, Uh, when we are taking this high resolution data and trying to extract the parameters from that high resolution data and using that information along with the ground information meteorological data set socio economic data set or some other uh, data which has been collected from the geospatial technology we can apply we can integrate it for some applications so um, so this uav data for example can be used along with the remote sensing data or it can 
support the GIS based analysis. So, it is better actually we learned that how the skills and how the technology of the UAV is, go, uh, is going to be a future mapping tool. So, it is not just a mapping tool, but it is a very, very useful tool to support that. Now, uh, the next part is the how to choose the right kind of a drone. So, depending upon the, uh, you know, the specification, depending upon the application, you have to choose the right sensor, you have to choose the right platform, popular flight controllers and the platforms and um, what is the application, whether we are using for uh, agriculture or inspection work. So, these are some of the parameters which are given here starting from the operation parameters to what is the performance of the camera, operational safety, uh, price and the place of production. So, this all this will determine the selection criteria for the drone for my application. So, this is uh, a book written by me on uh, UAV systems, further details can be found here. Thank you very much. This is all about this lecture.